If you can hear chewing, it's my cat. She's eating right beside me. I don't know if you can hear, but I can. So yeah. <laughs> Welcome to or welcome back to my channel and in today's video I will be telling you all about my recent reads. Now this is my second recent reads on this channel and in this one I have four. Last time I had three, this time I've had four so props to me but also each one of these books is a different genre so who am I? Um, <laughs> normally I'm like YA fantasy type of reader but I have like been broadening my horizons lately and it's beautiful. We're growing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, but if you like recent reads videos, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new and would like to see more bookish content from me. But without further ado, let's just get into the books that I have been reading lately. Okay, so um, the way I'll do these books is from like the oldest book that I read to the newest book I read. Yeah, makes sense. It's like in the span of like a month and a half, I think. I've read four, maybe. I don't know. It's something like that. So the first book that I read was Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. And this is an adult romance um, on a steamy factor between like zero and Sarah J. Mass. Um, uh, I say that because you'll see. Um, this is like a five. Um, it's in the sense that it's steamy, but okay, this is how I rate it. Like, there are certain books that you can read in front of like, like in the, in like the living room with your parents sitting there or your family sitting there and you're okay. Okay. This book is one of them. And then there's books like A Quarter Silver Flames. You cannot read that in front of people. No, don't read that in front of anyone because we'll get there. But yeah, this book is about a girl named Hazel and a guy named Josh, of course. And so they kind of have a history where they knew each other in college. He was kind of older than her. She kind of had a crush on him, but like she was like the quirk. She is the quirky, not like other girls girl. Okay. She doesn't care what people think about her. She says what she says. Like she's got confidence to boot. Okay. Like no lie like I would want to be her like I think she's just like she doesn't care she doesn't care but um years go by and they don't see each other and she becomes best friends with his sister that she just doesn't know that they're related and then she goes to a barbecue at her friend's house and he is there and they start talking and they start like becoming friends and then they're like hey we're both not dating people so let's set each other up on blind dates We'll all go on the dates together. So they go on like these big group blind dates. Something happens in her apartment and her apartment floods. So she has no place to live other than Josh's house, of course. So she goes and lives with him. It's a romance. You know where I'm getting at. It's just gonna, <laughs> like, there's really no plot twist, no plot holes. Like, a romance is what it is. I mean, there is like a little twisty twist in this, but like, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's around, you know what you're getting when you get into like a Christina Lauren. So like the ending's not going to shock you, but it's a cute read. I think I gave it a four stars. I'm pretty sure I gave it a four. Like I will tell you how I do my reading. Five stars are, I loved it. I would read it again. Four stars are, I liked it, but I wouldn't reread it. Um, three stars, which is eh. And then I don't, I don't give one or two stars to books because like, who am I to say a book was like garbage, you know? So because what's garbage to me might be potpourri to you. It's just, I don't feel like I have the right to say a book was like a one or two star book. So that's how I write my books, three, four, fives. So now you'll know. But yeah, this one I gave, I'm pretty sure I gave a four. Pretty sure it was cute, just a cute romance. The next book that I read was No Exit by Taylor Adams. I'm pretty sure I've done a review on this book somewhere on this channel. It's there. I'll link it. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere up here. Um, but this is a thriller and it was the first thriller I'd ever read and 
it was so good. So basically this is about a girl named Becky, Beverly, Dove, Rebecca, Bex? I don't know the girl's name, hold on, Darby. I don't know where I got those names from. Anyway, Whew. this is about a girl named Darby and she is traveling from Colorado to Utah or Utah to Colorado, but I think it's Colorado to Utah on a really stormy, snowy night. She has a crappy car and she knows she's not going to make it. So she stops at a rest stop to wait until the storm passes, but she finds out that the storm's not going to pass until like the next morning. That's when anyone's going to show up to like plow the roads or anything. So she shows up at this rest stop and there's like three other cars there and there's people inside and she meets them and everything seems fine. And she goes outside to make a phone call because she needs to get to Utah because her mom is having surgery. And she goes outside to make a phone call. She can't get any reception, of course. And then as she's walking back inside, she looks and sees this van. You know, the white van with no windows, sort of pretty much. There's like windows on the back of the door. And you know, the first thing that like came to my mind when I heard that, I was like, dum dum. SVU van. It's like an SVU white van. It's just, that's what you think of. We all know it. So anyway, sees the van. She's like walking by. She's nosy. She peers inside and she sees what she thinks is a cage with like a hand stick, like holding onto the cage. Come to find out she was right. There is a kid in the cage. Someone has kidnapped this little girl and now she has to find out who did it. That's the premise of the story. It's fast paced. All that happens in the first chapter. It sucks you in and you need to know. You need to know who did it. Okay. And tell this book has plot twist after plot twist after plot twist. It was so good. So good. It all is in the span of that night and it's just chef's kiss. I love this book. He has a new book coming out this year called Harp and Bridge. I'm pretty sure I will get it. It's coming to my house. We're going to read it. It's going to be good. It's about like a twin and the twin disappears and the other twin has to like discover what happened. Oh, I'm, I'm ready for that book. Okay. Now the next book that I read will probably be like the bulk of this <laughs> review of these books. It was none other than A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. Okay. Now this book is huge. It's almost 800 pages. It's like 757 pages. Now, is it the fourth book in A Court of Thorns and Roses? Technically. Is it technically a whole new series? The vibe's different. I would say yes. It doesn't even have a court of title. It's a cost. If we're going to get technical, that's the acronym, a cost. But, um, Let's just start by saying, by no means is this a new adult book. Okay, no. Um, I'm glad they marketed this as a new adult book because it is. I think you can get away with like the first book as being like age 15. If you're 15, 14, 15, I, I'll, I'll give that away. I'll give it to you. Um, books two and three, I would say you at least should be like 16, 17 when you read those books ish. You should be like 50 when you have to read this book. No, I'm kidding. Um, but it definitely is new adult. Don't let anyone try to like, don't let your kids be like, but I wonder, no, like I would kill my kids. Like my mom would kill me if I read this when I was 10. I started reading the adult when I was 10 years old and I could not have read this when I was 10 years old. Mm -mm. I'm 30. I'll be 32 this year. I shouldn't read it now. Just saying. Uh, this book you do not read with your family in the living room. I mean, if you got a good poker face, by all means, you can. But if you don't, then don't read it with your family. Um, this book is following Nesta, uh, who was Feyre's sister, and Cassian. Um, it's in a third person point of view, so you get both people's point of views, but more so like not their 
first person point of view so you get it from the third person but this book deals I guess the main topic of this book is trauma and dealing with trauma because Nesta does not deal with trauma well um for the most part she deals with it by pushing it inside not talking about it drinking and having sex with random strangers that's just what happens um and the night court specifically I would assume Feyre and probably let's be real Rizand is getting upset with her for like always putting like going to the um taverns every night and putting a, like the bill like she's spending loads and loads of money which I didn't understand because you're the night court I know you've got plenty of money that's just an excuse I know to get her to like straighten up but still I think coming from like a psychological point of view because I had to because of my job and like just knowing like you can't help anyone unless they want to be helped and I don't think at the point in this book she had reached rock bottom yet because if she had reached rock bottom at the beginning of the book the rest of the book wouldn't have taken place so and I'm not going to give any spoilers or anything because I know some people haven't read it yet but I just think she wasn't ready for like an intervention and that's pretty much what it felt like it was an intervention they gave her two choices she could go live at the house of wind and train with cassian in the morning and then work in the library the rest of the day or she could go home so you know she did her choice and she lives she went to the house of wind um but yeah you get a slew of new side characters too which is nice um definitely like i don't think this book had to be this long I think this book could have been like 100, 150 pages shorter and it still would have been the same impact. Um, the last 99 pages of this book is so fast paced that I was like, okay, it, it was too fast in my opinion. Um, I knew, I, I like reading this the first time, I didn't know where they were going with the ending. And then if I would have reread it and I looked back, I'd be like, okay, I saw where you were putting like little snippets here and there. That was like, okay, this is how it's gonna go at the end but all's well but let's get to the steamy factor of this on a scale of one to ten it's a 15. um i have seen more of the word <sighs> rhymes with sock because i can't say it on uh youtube but the word rhymes with sock okay i have seen that more in this book than i care to see it ever again in my life just saying it's like Bloomsbury was like we how much smut are you gonna put in this Sarah and Sarah was like yes okay that's just that's that's what happened um the first 200 some pages are fine uh there's no scenes in there and then you get to page 200 and it's like bam and then it's like bam and she starts off like she gives you little snippets. She's like, here, I'm going to give you a little tasty taste of what's going to come in the later chapters. So, you know, it starts off a little touchy, touchy, feely, feely, um, little kissy, kissy, and then a little, <laughs> and then from there, it just, it just grows. She agrees. But yeah, um, I think I gave this a four. I, it was not my favorite in the series because uh well I am a Reese girl through and through and even though people have mixed feelings about him in this book I am a Reese girl and uh nothing will ever compare to him so sorry not sorry but no I, did, I gave it a four I enjoyed it like but it wasn't my favorite from the series but if you would like a whole video where I go in on this book, let me know down in the comments because I will do like a spoilery part and I'll do like a non-spoilery part for people who haven't read it. But if you would like to hear all my thoughts, let me know. Okay, lastly, I buddy read this book with a friend from Instagram and that was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was such a good book. Like I was pleasantly surprised. I had heard that it was good, but I'm like, 
I'm so iffy when it comes to like good reviews. I'm like, is it really though? Can it really be that good? Um, but no, I really enjoyed this book. It's all in interview form. So, uh, excuse me. So it's more like a fast read um, because you don't like have full pages. It's like sectioned off. Um, but it's about this band called The Six and back in the 70s and they get together with this girl named Daisy Jones and they first they do like a duet and like everyone loves it and they're like well she has to join the band so she joins the band and from there it just if you like Fleetwood Mac um or if you like the episode in season two of Glee called Rumors you'll like this book okay um <laughs> That's how I can, that's the only way I can like explain this. Um, because Rumors is the Fleetwood Mac episode and it's, so if you like Fleetwood Mac, if you like Behind the Music on VH1, if you're like my age and remember that, you'll like this book. It is very much that. Um, I really can't say much about it without like giving it away, like how it ends and stuff like that. But, um, no, it was good. You know, you trigger warnings for um, drug use. It's all the way through the book. So if substance abuse is something that um, you have a hard time with, just know that that's heavily used in the book. But no, I really enjoyed this. I have heard that the audiobook is so much better because it's a full cast. I don't know if you get to hear the music or not, but I would have loved to hear the songs. They do have them in the back, like they're listed in all the lyrics and stuff, which was nice, but I would have really liked to hear the songs. But I don't have an audiobook, so I didn't listen to an audiobook, but I did read it. So, really good. I'm pretty sure I gave this a four. No, I gave this a five because of the last couple pages in the book. So, yeah, I gave it a five. Okay, but that is all for today's video. Those are all my recent reads. I am currently reading A Thousand Boy Kisses and A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So look forward to hearing my thoughts on those later. But yeah, let me know down in the comments what you've been recently reading. What have you read? Have you read any of these? Let a girl know down in the comments. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. All my social media will be linked down below like always. But until the next one, guys, I hope you have a good day and I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Why does my family make so much noise when I'm trying to film a video? Oh my god. Guys, you're pissing me off. It's you hear that showing? No. You're so loud.